will consider a service sold with a one month fee trial before a customer can use the service he or she has to sign up for the trial one obvious assumption then of the business model is that customer will sign up for a free trial once they have a certain am amount of information about the service a critical question to consider is whether customer will in fact sign up for the free trial given a certain amount certain number of promise feature the value hypothesis somewhere in the business model probably buried in a single cell is a strategy is specified the percentage of customer who see the free trial offer who then sign up maybe in our projection we say that this number should be 10 percent if you think about it this is a leap of faith questions it really should be represented in giant letters in a bold red font we assume 10 percent of the customer will sign up most entrepreneur approach a question like this by building the product and the checking to see how customer react to it i consider this is to be exactly backward because it can lead to a lot of waste first if it turns out that we are building something nobody wants the whole exercise will be an avoidable expense of time and money if customer won't sign up for the free tri trial they'll never get to experience the amazing feature that awaits them even if they do sign up there are many other opportunities for waste for example how many features do we really need to include to appeal to early adopters every extra feature is a form of waste and if we delay the task for these extra feature it comes with a tremendous potential cause in terms of learning and cycle time the lesson of the mvp is that my any additional work beyond what was required to start learning is waste no matter how important it might have seems at the time to demonstrate i'll share several mvps technique from actual lean startup in each case you will witness entrepreneurs avoiding the temptation to overbuild and overpromise. The video minimum viable product Drew Houston is the CEO of Dropbox, a Silicon Valley company that makes an extremely easy to use file share tool, install an application, a Dropbox folder appears on your computer desktop. Anything you drag into the folder is uploaded automatically to the Dropbox service and then instantly replicated across all your computers and devices. The follow of the funding team was made up of engineers as the product demanded significant technical expertise to build. It required, for example, integration with a variety of computer platform and operating system, Windows, Macintosh, iPhone, Android, and so on. Each of these implementation happens at a deep level of the system and requires specialized know-how to make the user experience exceptional. In fact, one of the Dropbox's biggest competitive advantages is that the product works in such a seamless way that the competition struggles to emulate it. These are not the kind of the people one would think of as marketing geniuses. In fact, none of them had our work in a marketing job. They had prominent venture capital backers and could have been expected to apply the standard engineering thinking to build a business. Build it and they will come. But Dropbox did something different. In parallel with their product development effort, the founder wanted feedback from customer about what really matters to them. In particular, Dropbox needed to test its leap of faith question. If we can provide a superior customer experience, will people give our product a try? They believe rightly as it turned out that file synchronization was a problem that most people didn't know they had. Once you experience the solution, you can't imagine how you ever live without it. This is not 
the kind of entrepreneurial question you can ask or expect an answer to in a focus group customer often don't know what they want and they often have a hard time understanding dropbox when the concept was explained huston learned this the hard way when he tried to raise venture capital in meeting after meeting investors would explain that this market space was crowded with existing product none of them had made very much money and the problem wasn't a very important one drew would ask have you personally tried those other product when they would say yes he asks, did they work seamlessly for you? The answer was uh, almost always no, yet in meeting after meeting, the venture capital was not imagine a world in line with Drew Vision. Drew is contrast believe that if the software just work like magic, customer would flock to it. The challenge was that it was impossible to demonstrate the working software in a prototype form. The product required that they overcome significant technical hurdles. It also had an online service component that required high, high reliability and availability to avoid the risk of waking up after years of development with a product nobody wanted. Drew did something unexpected easy. He made a video. The video is banal, a simple three minute demonstration of the technology as it is meant to work. But it was targeted at a community of technology early adopters. Drew narrates the video personally, and as he narrating, the viewer is watching his screen. As he described the kind of files he liked to synchronize, the viewer can watch his mouse manipulate his computer of course if you are paying attention you start to notice that the files he's moving around all of in jokes and humorous reference that were appreciated by his this community of early adopters drew recounted it drove under of thousands of people to the website or beta waiting list went from 5,000 people to 75,000 people literally overnight. It totally blew us away. Today, Dropbox is one of the Silicon Valley hottest companies rumored to be worth more than 1 billion. In this case, the video was the minimum viable product. The MVP validated to leave a faith assumption that customer wanted the product was developing not because they said so in a focus group or because of a hopeful analogy to another business but because they actually sign up the concrete minimum viable product consider another kind of mvp technique the con the concrete mvp to understand how this technique works meet manuel russo the ceo of the austin tax Texas based startup called Food on the Table. Food on the Table creates weekly meal plans and grocery lists that are based on the food you and your family enjoy, then hook into your local grocery stores to find the best deals on the ingredient. After you sign up for the site, you walk through a little setup a which you identify your main grocery stores and check out the food your family likes later you can pick another nearby store if you want to compare prices next you are presented with a list of items that are based on your pre preference and ask what are you in the mood of this week make your choices select the number of meals you're ready to plan and choose what you care about most in terms of time money wealth health or writing at this point the site searches through recipe that match our needs prices out of the cost of the meal for you and lets you print out your shopping list clearly this is an elaborate service behind the scene a team of professional chef devise recipes that take advantage of item that are on a scale at local grocery stores around the country those recipes are matched via computer algorithm to each family unique needs and preference try to visualize the work involved databases of almost every grocery store in the country must be maintained including what's on sale at each one each each one this week 
those groceries have to be matched to appropriate recipes and then appropriately have to be matched to appropriately customized tag and sorted if a recipe calls for broccoli rape is that the same ingredient as the broccoli on sale at the local market after reading that description you might be surprised to learn that food on the table began life with a single customer start of supporting thousands of grocery stores around the country as it does today FOIT supported just one. How did the company choose which store to support? The founders didn't until they had their first customer. Similarly, they began live with no recipe whatsoever until their first customer was ready to begin her meal planning. In fact, the company safe serve its first customer without building any software without signing any business development partnership and without hiring any chef manual along with vp of product steve sanderson went to local supermarket and mom's group in his hometown of austin Part of their mission was the typical observation of customer that is a part of design thinking and other ideation techniques. However, manual of design thinking and other ideation techniques, however, manual and his team were also on the hunt for something else, their first customer. As they meant potential customers in those settings, they would interview them the way any good market researcher would but at the end of each interview they would attempt to make a sale they described the benefit of foit name a weekly subscription fee and invite the customer to sign up most times they were reacted re acted after all most people are not early adopters and will not sign up for a new service site unseen but eventually someone did that one early adopter got the concerts treatment instead of interacting with the foit product via impersonal software she got a personal visit each week from the ceo of company he and the vp of the product would revive review what was on sale at her preferred grocery store and carefully select recipe on the basis of her preference going so far as to learn her favorite recipe for items she regularly cooked for her family each week they would hand her in person a prepared packet containing a shopping list and relevant recipe solicit her feedback and make changes as necessary most important each week they would collect a check for 9.95 dollar talk about insufficient major according to the traditional criteria this is a terrible system entirely non-scalable and a complete waste of time the ceo and vp of product instead of building their business are engaged in the drudgery of solving just one customer problem instead of marketing themselves to millions they sold themselves to one worst of all their efforts didn't appear to be leading to anything tangible they had no product no meaningful revenue no database of recipe not even a lasting organization however viewed through the lens of the lean startup they were making monumental progress each week they were learning more and more about what was required to make their product a success after a few weeks they were re ready for another customer each customer they brought on made it easier to get the next one because FOTT could focus on the same 
grocer stores getting to know its products and the kind of people who shop there well each new customer got the concierge treatment personal in home visit the work but after a few more customer the overhead of serving them one on one has started to increase only at the point where the founder were too busy to bring on additional customer did manuel and his team start to invest in automation in the form of product development each iteration of their minimum viable product allowed them to save a little more time and serve a few more customer delivering the recipe and shopping list via email instead of via an in home visit starting to parse list of what was on sale automatically via software instead of by hand even eventually taking credit card payment online instead of a handwritten check before long they had built a substantial service offering first in austin area and eventually nationwide but along the way their product development team was always focused on scaling something that was working rather than trying to invent something that might work in the future as a result their development efforts involved far less ways than it's typical for a venture of this kind it is important to contrast this with the case of a small business in which it is routine to see the ceo founder president and owner serving customer directly one at a time in concierge mvp this personalized service is not the product but a learning activity designed to test the leap of faith assumption in the company growth model in fact a common outcome of a concierge mvp is to validate the company proposed growth model making it clear that a different approach is needed this can happen even if the if the if the initial mvp is profitable for the company without formal growth model many companies get caught in the trap of being satisfied with a small profitable business when a pivot change in course or strategy might lead to more significant growth the only way to know is to have tested the growth models systematically with real customers pay no attention to the age people behind the curtain Meet Max, Vantila, and Damon Horowitz Technologies, with a vision to build a new type of search, develop design to answer the kind of question that befuddled state-of-art companies such as Google. Google befuddled. Think about it. Google and its peer excel at answering factual questions. What is the tallest mountain in the world? who was the 23rd president of the united states but for more subjective question google struggle asks what's a good place to go out for a drink after the ball game in my city and the technology fails what interesting about the class of queries is that they are relatively easy for a person to answer imagine being Imagine being at a cocktail party surrounded by friends how likely would you be to get a high quality answer to your subjective question you almost certainly would get one unlike factual queries because these subjective questions have no single right answer today technology struggle to answer them such questions depend on the person answering them his or her personal experience stays an assessment of what you are looking for to solve with their deep technical knowledge to solve this problem max and damon created a product called artwork with their deep technical knowledge and industry experience it would have been reasonable 
to expect them to dive in and start programming said they look six months to figure out what they should be building but they didn't spend that year at the whiteboard strategizing or engage in a landing market research project instead they build a series of functioning product each designed to test a way of solving this problem for their customer each product was then offered to beta tester whose behavior was used to validate or ref refute each specific hypothesis see example in site work